Vertical Navigation, or VNAV, is a great resource that provides for optimized descent profiles to a designated altitude, such as a traffic pattern altitude, a fix designated by ATC, or to a series of altitude constraints, such as on an arrival procedure. This video covers the Enhanced Descent VNAV functionality found in the G1000 NXI. Pilots have been taking advantage of the precise lateral navigation provided by Garmin devices for a long time now. And with your G1000 NXI, you have the same level of precision for vertical navigation. The system can provide multi-waypoint barrel VNAV descent guidance for both the in-route phase as well as for initial approach guidance. This guidance, provided in the form of a vertical path, is based on altitude constraints associated with lateral waypoints in the active flight plan. For instrument approaches, VNAV guidance ends at the final approach fix. On the active flight plan page, you will see altitudes depicted in either white or cyan font, and some altitudes may have lines above, below, or both above and below the number. An altitude displayed in white with no lines above or below is an altitude calculated by the system and provides an estimate of your altitude as you pass over a waypoint. If the altitude depicted in white has lines above and or below it, it's an altitude constraint pulled from the navigation database, but is for reference only. These are not used in determining VNAV guidance. An altitude displayed in cyan is an altitude used in determining vertical guidance. If a pencil appears next to the altitude, that indicates the altitude was manually entered. An invalid constraint, which cannot be used by the system, will appear with an X over the altitude. There are certain pilot actions that are required to ensure successful employment of VNAV. First, you need to input or confirm that altitude constraints are shown in the active flight plan. These could be entered by the pilot or populated automatically as part of an instrument procedure. Second, you must set a selected altitude that is lower than the current altitude. For ATC controlled operations, the altitude selected should be the lowest altitude to which you were cleared to descend. Third, you must ensure that the aircraft is on an active nav leg. And finally, ensure that VNAV is armed on the Garmin Autopilot Mode Controller if so equipped. If a pilot action is missed or a limitation exceeded, alternate methods should be used for the descent. This can include Vertical Speed Mode, VNAV Direct 2, or disengaging the autopilot and hand flying. For non-Garmin Autopilots, you need to set the vertical speed required at the top of descent. To develop your understanding of VNAV functionality available in the G1000 NXI, we'll first show how the feature can be employed on a typical VFR flight. While flying along on a course from Redwood Falls to Flying Cloud Airport in Minneapolis, we decide to arrive at the traffic pattern altitude for Flying Cloud Airport three nautical miles before the airport. This prevents us from descending into the pattern and provides for visually scanning for traffic in the area. To accomplish this using the VNAV function, we go to the Active Flight Plan page and select the Destination Airport Waypoint. After highlighting a waypoint, a soft key selection labeled ATKOFS, which stands for Along Track Offset, will appear. We select that key. Now the cursor moves to the Offset Distance field and we turn the small knob to the left three clicks to select minus three nautical miles. Once the offset value is set, we select the enter key and the cursor now moves to the altitude field. Here we enter our pattern altitude of 1,900 feet MSL and then press enter. Now we have our new along track offset waypoint created with a user designated altitude set. Next to the designated altitude is a pencil icon, indicating that this constraint was manually entered and it is not part of a procedure retrieved from the navigation database. On the map display, we can see the bottom of descent showing three miles prior to flying cloud and the TOD or top of descent marker prior to the class B airspace along our route. 
In the active VNAV profile section of the flight plan, we can see our time to top of descent counting down along with the default FPA or flight path angle of 2.5 degrees. And we can see the vertical speed target of 491 feet per minute. During the descent, you would see the time to bottom of descent as well as the vertical speed required and current vertical deviation from the path. To make adjustments to the active VNAV profile, you can select the VNAV profile soft key, which activates the cursor on the vertical speed target field. Here, you can change the desired vertical speed or move the cursor over the FPA field to change the desired flight path angle. Selecting the Cancel VNAV soft key leaves the along track waypoint visible but removes the vertical profile. Selecting that soft key again, now relabeled Enable VNAV, reactivates the vertical profile. Prior to arriving at the TOD, we adjust the selected altitude to our next desired altitude of 1,900 feet. We also select the VNAV mode on the autopilot controller. This will allow the autopilot to capture the vertical path and guide us down to the pattern altitude. When within one minute of the top of descent, the programmed altitude appears near the selected altitude field. The vertical deviation indicator appears to the left of the altimeter tape. A vertical speed required indicator shows on the vertical speed indicator, and we hear vertical track. Using the vertical situation display, we can monitor our descent, stay aware of terrain and obstacles, and we can see the bottom of descent point showing three miles prior to Flying Cloud Airport. While in most cases it's more efficient to wait until the TOD indication to begin the optimized descent, there may be times that you wish to start on your vertical path immediately. In those cases, you can select the VNAV Direct key, and the vertical path will start slightly ahead of the aircraft to allow for a smooth transition to the descent. This same procedure can be employed during an IFR flight. IFR pilots often receive instructions to cross at a certain altitude at a defined distance from the waypoint in their flight. In this example, we're on a flight from Duluth International to Flying Cloud Airport. With the heavy airline traffic on arrival to Minneapolis International, ATC directs us to cross 10 miles north of Gopher at 3,000 and to descend at pilot discretion. While we could simply start down after acknowledging ATC, that would mean losing out on the benefits of remaining at altitude for as long as possible, especially when we have a strong tailwind. Creating an optimized descent is the better choice here. So, we go into the active flight plan. Set the cursor on the Gopher VOR waypoint. Select the Long Track Offset soft key, and then enter the 10-mile offset using the same method we used in our VFR scenario. On the Active Flight Plan page, we now see the new offset waypoint. On the map display, we can see the location of the altitude constraint and our TOD is showing. All we need to do now is make sure to set 3000 in the selected altitude window and then select VNAV on the Garmin Autopilot controller. Failing to set a lower altitude in the selected altitude window is a very common error that would prevent the aircraft from descending at the TOD. A best practice here is to set the lowest altitude to which you are cleared. Another common error is to forget to select VNAV on the Garmin Autopilot controller. This selected altitude entry and autopilot mode selection can be made at any time prior to the TOD. Legacy G1000 users should note that the VNAV mode selection must be made within 5 minutes of the TOD, or the function will time out. Pilots who fly arrival procedures on a regular basis are familiar with the descend via clearance given by ATC. This clearance simplifies ATC communications, but can lead to errors if not properly managed by the pilot. With an arrival procedure that contains altitude constraints loaded, the VNAV function provides for an optimized descent profile that helps to ensure that each of the altitude constraints is met. To demonstrate this, 
We've selected the Grandpa 1 arrival into Las Vegas, as that arrival has multiple altitude constraints. The chart for that procedure shows the first constraint at Luxor at 12,000, then Grandpa at 11,000, followed by Dublix at 9,000, and Frog at 8,000. Here we can see the arrival procedure as reflected in the active flight plan. To the right of each waypoint in the selected arrival, we can see an altitude, with some showing white and some in cyan. White numbers are advisory only and reflect the altitude you will be at at various waypoints as part of the vertical path to the designated altitude in the flight plan. Cyan is used to depict designated altitudes for which vertical guidance is available, with the first such altitude showing here at 12,000 feet at Luxor, just as depicted on the chart for this procedure. The remainder of the altitude constraints are also the same as reflected on the chart. Take note of the lowest altitude in the procedure, in this case 8,000 feet at Frog, since that is the altitude you can set into the selected altitude field when cleared to descend via an arrival procedure. Looking at the map display for this arrival procedure, we can see the TOD marker prior to Casino Intersection. Taking advantage of the vertical situation display, we can see all of the altitude constraints associated with their respective waypoints in the procedure. When within one minute until top of descent, you'll see a magenta altitude number appear near the selected altitude field on the PFD. This is the designated altitude for the upcoming altitude constraint. You'll also hear vertical track and see a flashing message appear that informs you that the TOD is within one minute. At the same time, you'll see a vertical deviation indicator, or VDI, appear to the left of the altitude tape, with a magenta arrow that descends from the top. You'll also see a vertical speed required indication appear on the VSI tape to the right of the altitude tape. This is a good time to confirm that the selected altitude is set and VNAV is armed on the autopilot controller. When the TOD is reached, power should be reduced and managed as necessary to maintain the desired speed while the aircraft ascends on the calculated vertical path. Indications on the VDI, altitude tape, and VSI indicator show that the VNAV descent is in progress. During the descent, you can see the BOD, or bottom of descent, indication on the map display and on the vertical situation display. Once we reach the current vertical constraint, with further vertical constraints in the flight plan, the system sequences to the next constraint on the vertical path, and we can see the next altitude constraint showing on the map. The VNAV descent continues in this manner until reaching the lowest altitude in the flight plan and is allowed by the selected altitude. As mentioned earlier in this video, Enhanced VNAV provides guidance all the way to the final approach fix on instrument approaches. Here we've loaded and activated the ILS-26 right approach with flies for the initial approach fix. In the flight plan, we see flies has a constraint of 8,000 feet, and the final approach fix of Condi has a constraint of 3,800 feet. With the approach activated, VNAV vertical path guidance will bring us to 3,800 feet at Condi while observing all intermediate altitude constraints. Note that once an approach has been activated, that it may be necessary to reselect VNAV mode on the autopilot controller. Once inbound to the final approach fix for a ground-based nav approach, the system will automatically switch the CDI source to VLOC. At the final approach fix, vertical path guidance is replaced with glide slope vertical guidance. Worth repeating here are the four basic pilot actions required to ensure successful employment of VNAV. First, you must have a VNAV altitude entered into the flight plan whether this was input by the pilot or it is automatically populated as part of a procedure. Second, you must set a selected altitude that is lower than the current altitude. For ATC controlled operations, 
The altitude selected should be the lowest altitude to which you were cleared to descend. Third, you must ensure that the aircraft is on an active nav leg. And finally, ensure that VNAV is armed on the Garmin Autopilot Mode Controller. If a pilot action is missed or a limitation exceeded, alternate methods should be used for the descent. This could include Vertical Speed Mode, VNAV Direct 2, or disengaging the autopilot and hand flying. For non-Garmin autopilots, you need to set the vertical speed required at the top of descent. Vertical navigation with the G1000 NXI has certain limitations. The system is not able to meet constraints that require the aircraft to climb. It also cannot meet constraints that require a descent in excess of 4,000 feet per minute, or a flight path angle in excess of 6 degrees. It also cannot meet a constraint when the top of descent is located behind the aircraft. The leg type must support altitude constraints, and no constraints can be added past the final approach fix. Whether using VNAV functionality with an autopilot on a descent via clearance for an arrival procedure, or hand flying the airplane to arrive at pattern altitude at a designated point, the VNAV feature is a great resource that reduces pilot workload while providing optimized descent profiles.